Hello from Amsterdam, my name is Ivana. I usually travel a lot as a solo female traveler and make travel vlogs, but today I'm going to talk about a topic that I never talk about. Muslims and politics. In case you've been living under a rock and have no idea what the hashtag Muslim ban stands for, let me, let me quickly get you back up to speed, my friend. President Trump on Friday closed the nation's border, so of the United States of America, to refugees from around the world, ordering that families fleeing the slaughter in Syria be indefinitely blocked from entering the United States and temporarily suspending immigration from several predominantly Muslim countries. The executive order suspends the entry of refugees into the United States for 120 days and directs officials to determine additional screening to ensure that those approved for refugee admission, refugee admission do not pose a threat to the security and welfare of the United States. The order also stops the admission of refugees from Syria indefinitely and bars entry into the United States for 90 days from seven predominantly Muslim countries linked to concerns about terrorism. Those countries are Iraq, Syria, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen. Apparently the conclusion is that if you are a Muslim, you pose a very high threat of being a terrorist. Now, being a refugee child myself, my mother is Serbian, I was born in Serbia, I was born in Belgrade, my dad is Bosnian, uh, I lived in Bosnia for the time that I lived in Yugoslavia, and my parents had to flee the country during the war because they were a mixed marriage. So I got a new life as a refugee child in the Netherlands and have been able to accomplish what I accomplished until this day because another country welcomed us and gave us another shot of a safe life. This obviously hits me in the feels. That's why I wanted to talk about my experience with Muslims and how they terrorized me. The first story happened to me in Mumbai. If you have never been into the Mumbai local slow train, let me tell you this, it is incredibly crowded, especially during rush hours. For me, that's very entertaining. I love to experience daily life and yes, rush hours are also you know, part of daily life and public transportation is as well. So I was in a Mumbai local slow train during a very, very crowded time of the day. An Indian girl already grabbed me from the crowd and dragged me to the aisle in between the seats because that was less crowded. So we're standing there, we're chatting. It was super fun for me to experience that. And suddenly I feel a tap on the shoulder. When I turn around, there's an old Muslim man he was dressed like a Muslim, so that's why I know he was a Muslim man. He was probably 60 or 17 years old. He points at his seat. This man, this a lot older man than me, he stood up for me to let me sit down during rush hour. Obviously, I did not accept his offer because that would be just rude. The man was way older than me. But yeah, I think we can definitely qualify this as an act of terrorism, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. The next story happened to me in Malaysia, a predominantly Muslim country. It was my first time as a solo female traveler in a predominantly Muslim country. And when I'm traveling in a country with a dress code, I like to dress that according to that dress code. So usually in the streets, I would, you know, cover my shoulders, cover my legs. It was perfectly fine. I also wanted to go to a local water park, Sunway Lagoon, because I didn't bring any swimwear with me. I don't know why, I just didn't. I went to a shop and I bought a bathing suit. Praise the swimwear gods! I did not buy a bikini, because this is what happened. I went to the water park and I got changed in the changing room, already noticing that most of the ladies definitely weren't wearing a bikini, but also no, you know, swimsuits. They were more covered up. But I was like, yeah, whatever, this is a ladies' locker room. They're probably going, going to be more ladies outside that, you know, have just normal swimsuits or whatever. So I got out and I look around. All the ladies are covered up. So there were maybe like one or two foreigners who were wearing bikinis or, you know, swimsuit like I did. But 
the the local ladies they were wearing well the the least that they were wearing were shorts and a t-shirt so covering their shoulders and covering covering their butts i felt extremely uncomfortable not because people were staring at me nobody was staring they were just doing their own business but because I was obviously underdressed and it made me feel so uncomfortable. But you know, what's a girl to do? You ha just have to get on with it. So I walk over to the locker room space because I need to get rid of my stuff and I get a locker key. Walking over to the lockers, I notice a group of guys, local guys, so Muslims, teenage boys, they were probably like 16, 17 years old, something like that. And I felt so, I already felt very uncomfortable, but I felt like very, very uncomfortable walking towards that group of guys because I was like, uh, they're probably going to catcall me and I'm way underdressed and they're going to make fun of me or harass me or something like that. Not because they're Muslims, but that's generally what teenage guys do when they maybe like a girl or something. I don't know. And my locker was in their space like literally next to them so I felt so uncomfortable and I was just like okay I just have to get through this and get through the cat calling and blah blah they just glanced at me and they went on with their business so I was standing next to them and I cannot find my locker I'm trying out different numbers but somehow I don't know it doesn't add up I cannot find my locker maybe because I was so nervous and uncomfortable or whatever that I couldn't concentrate and, you know, find it. They turn around and they start helping me, but not in a, you know, disrespectful kind of way, like looking at my legs or maybe looking at my cleavage or whatever, or saying things like, oh, beautiful, you can't find it, la 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 la. No, they are literally just helping me find the locker and I feel so uncomfortable, but they are so sweet. And I'm like, okay, act normal, act normal, act normal, act normal. And they also can't find my locker. The next thing that happens is a Muslim couple, so a, a married man and a woman, they come over and they start helping me too. This is so uncomfortable by this point. Like I'm dying. I'm like, I just want to cover up everything because I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so disrespectful towards these nice people that I'm so underdressed, you know? And um, the man is helping me and the woman is standing there and she's so nice, she's, she's like, where are you from? And la 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 And eventually the husband finds my locker and I get rid of my stuff as soon as possible. And of course I thank everyone, like, thank you so much. They were so sweet. They did not stop helping me until we found my locker. And I was so grateful to these nice people that one, they were helping a foreigner, you know, when I couldn't find my way around the system. But also for two, being so respectful and kind to me, even though I was obviously underdressed as a guest in their country. I have a vlog about this and I told the story in Dutch, but that's why I thought I need to make this video. The, the story I told back then was in Dutch and I want people to know this. Because yes, obviously this also qualifies as an act of terrorism, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. My religion is love and I believe that no matter what country you're born or what your religion is or what your faith is or whatever, we all have basic needs. We all want a safe place to lay our head, a roof over our head and enough food to get us through the day. Religion doesn't define someone as a terrorist. It makes me so sad that people in desperate need of a safe place are now locked out just because they are born in the wrong country. I know for sure this video won't make a difference, but I just wanted to, you know, put this out there. It's the least that I can do for all my Muslim brothers and sisters, because yes, we are all brothers and sisters. We are all born on this planet. We are all human beings. We all breathe the same air. We all enjoy the same sun. There is nothing different between me and another human being who has a different religion. And I hope that makes you think too. Now, if any fights in the comments arise because people start, you know, name calling Muslims or whatever, I know I have the best viewers on the planet who can, you know, respond respectfully 
and not start any fights because we are better than that. Kill him with kindness, that's the motto. Thank you so much for watching and please feel free to share this video to let other people know that no, just having a certain religion doesn't qualify you as a terrorist. You can also always put a thumbs up and if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and would like to see the world with me, click that subscribe button and then I will see you next time. Bye.